Oh, I think the, the hands-on defending a network in this environment is some of the best training that you could give people who are going out into the field. Because I think what it does is it really condenses what you can learn over maybe the stretch of a couple of years of configuring systems, administering, administering systems, and securing them, and condenses that down into a couple of days. I mean, they're under attack constantly and have to react to attacks all the time. So they can take that experience and now go apply it into the real world and know that, hey, I want to configure this system in such a way to prevent these attacks from happening, because mm -hmm. guess what? I saw 10 or 15 of these attacks in an hour once, and here's how you know I configured the system to be resilient against it. Yeah, I mean, for the hackers, it's really great, right? Because when we do a penetration test, I'll go to a, a customer client or you know plug it into an environment and perform the penetration test. And mo you know most organizations have lots of computers across a large network, and you know, maybe they've got a whole rack of servers in a data center, and I'm attacking them, exploiting vulnerabilities. When you come here to this environment, there's almost one person for every computer on the teams. If you can break into a system that someone is actively sitting in front of looking for you breaking into it, then you know your skills are going to improve and the bar's a little higher for you. So if you can come to this environment and learn and build and break into systems that are being defended against you know 24 7, uh, then when you go out and do real penetration tests, you're in a much better position. Because typically, you may not have someone sitting right in front of it, you know, killing your processes when you're breaking in. So it's a great experience for the penetration tester or the hacker. I let the guys go. I guide them a little bit on their strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but I try and give them independence because, I mean, that's how they learn, you know. I mean, I could tell them, I think you should do this and this and this. But I like to let them explore their own uh, ways of breaking into the system and gently guide them, right? Because I don't want to, you know, tell everyone exactly how you should break into all these systems. Um, so I, I'm more, more of a guidance role. And when people get stuck, I try and help them. When people have technical questions, I try and help them. So um, one of the things that's progressed really over uh, the years of this competition is this really the shift from network-based vulnerabilities to web application-based vulnerabilities. Um, and you know the problem of network-based vulnerabilities was really bad, um, you know, several years ago. And there's been several protections in the way technologies evolved. Everything's moved to the web. Now all of a sudden we have this problem where you put up a website. The website's running software. You have to let the world access that software. So guess what? That's where attackers are focusing their efforts and breaking into the software that's going to be accessible to, to everyone. So. One of my strategies this year was to spend more time with the web applications. And I learned a very interesting thing. You know, with a network-based vulnerability, you may have some FTP server or server listening. Um, you may find an exploit for that and send the exploit and compromise the system, and that's great. With a web application, they're all very unique, specific, and custom, and it takes more time to break into that particular web application. Now, you may have the same end result, but your time is much more. So we took three of us uh, yesterday, and we focused in on one of the web applications. And it, it took us a long time to learn how the web application responded to our requests, understand the functionality of that web application. We figured out that uh, the web application um, server actually gave us access to the database. So we were able to manipulate the database to write files on the web server that led us to be able to execute commands. And once we were able to execute commands on the host, then we were able to take over the whole system. So it was this whole progression of doing a lot of research to figure out, well, you know, we know we have this piece of functionality on the host, what can we do with it? Um, and then that gave us like a little more headway into the system and like, okay, well, if we take this a little further, oh, look, we can write files on the system. And if we write a file here, we put our own application on it that let us run commands. So there's this whole progression and we spent a lot of time you know, making that all work. And what we found is the defenders had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> uh, and we were able to compromise each team using this specific method because they just weren't uh, picking up on our attacks. When you're working for an organization doing security, you have to convince your management that they should give you money and resources to protect the organization and implement security. I think right now, 
a lot of people are ill-equipped to do that, right? We may be really good at configuring a firewall, configuring an intrusion detection system, but here's where you have to make a constant business case to get the appropriate amount of resources for your organization to defend against it. Because you're never going to be able to defend against 100% of the attacks. I mean, there's always going to be some way in which something is going to happen security related where an attack is going to be successful. And that's not saying that, you know, someone from the internet's going to come in and break into your system. You know, maybe they've physically penetrated, maybe they're social engineering. I mean, there's tons of ways to get into an organization and you as the defender really have to understand the risks and gain the appropriate amount of support, right? Because we could all put every single last penny of our profits of our company into security, but then the business would fail. So we've got this balance that I think um, it needs refinement and we need to be armed with more uh, business cases and tools and processes to really help find that. Uh, that balance. So that's one of the things that I see as a, a continuing problem that really needs to be addressed uh, and get better.